Okay, we can start. <coughs> Okay, good morning, welcome to the second uh, <coughs> lessons, lesson of uh, switching and routing. Um, I have uploaded uh, the set of slides that we are going to present today. And uh, there is also another PDF file that contains some uh, handwritten notes. Uh, part of those notes uh, I've been able to, to convert in and uh, merge inside the slides part are still not in the slide, but uh, uh, so this is why I, I uploaded both the, <coughs> uh, the files. Uh, so what, what is missing here, you will find in the notes, okay? <coughs> so let's uh, start, and uh, this is the, set, the first uh, chapter of uh, the course in, uh, related to switching theory, as already I have uh, announced uh, <coughs> yesterday. And uh, now we start with uh, very simple uh, uh, definitions and basic concepts. Uh, they are quite easy to understand initially, and then we'll get uh, uh, more complicated. And the first uh, <coughs> uh, main, the main uh, uh, character we have to introduce in this part <coughs> is uh, the interconnection network, which is also called uh, uh, switching matrix. Uh, <coughs> switch uh, or <coughs> similar names <coughs> uh, in a, the, the formal definition uh, of this device uh, uh, is quite uh, difficult but uh, uh, we can think of it uh, as a, a, a box and uh, for now we don't care about what is inside the box the box has a set of uh, uh, input uh, ports uh, or also called uh, inlets, and a set of output ports, also called uh, outlets. And the first uh, <coughs> parameters uh, that you have to specify uh, are the number of inlets and the number of outlets. This gives you the size of the switching matrix. So we can also say that if n is the number of inlets and m is the number of outlets, this is an n by m uh, switching matrix, or n by m interconnection network. Usually, <coughs> uh, inlets are numbered from 0 to n minus 1 and the outlets from 0 to n minus 1 and not from 1 to n or 1 to m. And this is because uh, uh, quite often then these uh, sizes uh, are an integer power of 2. Okay, so you uh, usually have uh, matrices of size uh, 8 by 8, uh, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 64 by 64, and so on and so forth. And uh, this is very useful when you want to uh, associate uh, the inlets uh, to uh, addresses. Uh, since you, you usually manage uh, addresses in the binary form as binary numbers, <coughs> uh, assuming that you have uh, n equal to 2 power n, small n, <coughs> Uh, if you number the inlets from 0 to n minus 1, then you can use n bits to express, to, uh, to, write these, uh, uh, to write these addresses, while if you start from 1 to n, you have to use n plus 1 bits. Now, for example, if uh, a small n is 3, means you have 8 uh, inlets, if you number them from 0 to 7, you can use 3 bits, but if you number from 1 to 8, to use uh, four bits. Okay. So this is why they are numbered this way. <coughs> um, <coughs> what is uh, the function of this uh, device? Uh, you find it uh, in different places and uh, what uh, is more related to this course is the, the case where they, when uh, they, are, uh, they are located inside a switching equipment, so a router, a switch, uh, and in this case, we say that uh, uh, 
the schematics provides a connectivity inside the switch and equipment, but you can find uh, these devices also, for example, in high performance uh, computing machines uh, where they are called interconnection uh, devices and they provide interconnection inside the, <coughs> the computer to interconnect the different uh, modules that uh, uh, make up uh, the um, computer architecture. Um, usually these uh, devices are controlled by um, another part of uh, uh, hardware or, or, uh, or software, but usually hardware, uh, which is able to configure this device, so to tell the device exactly what it has to do in any uh, instant of time. And uh, control can be uh, centralized, so it's a separated uh, uh, chip that is connected to the uh, <coughs> switching device, so to the interconnection network. Uh, in some cases, you can also uh, design interconnection networks with a distributed control. We will uh, see uh, briefly look at an example at the end of this part when I will talk to you about uh, self-routing uh, switching, uh, switching uh, uh, matrices. So sometimes you can integrate the control party into the uh, switching chip. What is uh, the function that is uh, performed by this device? Uh, it's very simple. <coughs> this device creates a connection <coughs> between uh, and a specific inlet to a specific outlet. Uh, the connection is uh, a path uh, that is physically uh, created uh, across the, the, the switching system. <coughs> and um, along this path, you can then flow information <coughs> from the inlet to the outlet. Information can be anything from uh, maybe also analog signals, for example, in case of uh, uh, <coughs> um, let's say uh, optical switching uh, networks, uh, then you have uh, the uh, light signal that uh, flows uh, inside along the, the path that is created, or can be uh, digital information like bit streams, uh, or can be packets, and so on and so forth. So well, the concept is that you create a tunnel from a specific index and specific outlets to carry information across. And uh, it's an interconnection network is able to uh, set up uh, not one uh, connection at the time, but several connections at the time. Okay, uh, not necessarily all the possible uh, all possible connections has to be active you know, at a specific instant, maybe a subset of them, but in, in usually. There are more than one, and this is because when you use this interconnection network, you want parallelism inside, the, um, uh, parallelism in the switching operation. Uh, so we will see then uh, later on that uh, uh, some uh, routing architectures uh, don't use this kind of uh, device, but in other cases you use them exactly to be able to to set up more flows, more data flows at the same time. Uh, these connections uh, have uh, usually a holding time, so-called that is the duration. So they are set up in a given instant and uh, torn down or changed in a, uh, at another instant. Uh, if, for example, it's a, a, a switching, simple switching matrix. You see that at time one, you have uh, uh, connections uh, 2 to uh, 0, 1 to 2, and 2, 2 to 3, 1 to 2, and so on. And, so on. and uh, typically, uh, if this device is used for uh, circuit switching, the holding time of the connections will be long, maybe also uh, hours or days, uh, uh, it depends on the usage. While, while when you are using the same uh, device for packet switching, uh, holding times are very short, and we have seen uh, yes, uh, two days ago uh, that uh, when you are working at very high speed line speed, then the time <coughs> for the router to manage the packet is uh, very short, and uh, also the, the 
this, this means this implies that also these uh, connections that are created each time you have to flow a packet for this device can uh, uh, <coughs> have holding times uh, in the order of maybe nanosecond, millisecond, and so on. So it's a different word, but the, the logical function that you perform in circuit switching or in packet switching, as far as the interconnection network is concerned, is the same. <coughs> <coughs> then we can also <coughs> um, say, uh, mention uh, uh, some uh, restriction on the, all the possibilities that are given by these devices. And uh, for example, uh, we can assume that uh, uh, <coughs> you, don't, you cannot have inside the, uh, the interconnection network connection merging or connection splitting. Uh, connection uh, uh, splitting is uh, actually a useful property that uh, sometimes is required. Uh, for example, when you have to perform a multicast or broadcast, so you have you, for example, uh, receive a packet and then have to uh, replicate it on uh, for different destinations. Connection uh, <coughs> merging or collision usually is an undesired situation because uh, it means that uh, you are losing the information if you have a physical uh, <coughs> collision or sharing of a common, the same uh, part by two different, uh, uh <coughs> by two different flows. Uh, but in both cases, we can uh, assume that uh, for the examples that we will study later on, these two situations don't occur. If you exclude these two situations, then you have created a bijective correspondence between connections and input-output pairs or inlet-outlet pairs. And to be more precise, if you exclude this situation, it means that when you want to set up a connection, the connection must be uh, starting from an, an idle inlet, so an inlet that is not used by any other connection, and going to an idle outlet. Okay? Otherwise, you will have the two situations that I have uh, depicted above, and we can exclude from uh, our scope. So, if this is true, <clears throat> then you can also calculate the maximum number of connections that uh, you can set up in an n by n uh, interconnection network. And this is, of course, uh, the minimum between n and n. Because <coughs> when you have saturated the minimum of the two sides, the outlets or the inlets, you cannot set uh, uh, any more connections. Okay, so for, for example, here <coughs> you have a 5 by 4 uh, switching matrix, and the maximum number is of connection is 4. This is the situation where you have uh, achieved the maximum number. The same when you have uh, 4 by 5. In fact, you can see that here, this uh, inlet will remain idle, because you cannot set up, you cannot find any free outlet, and as well, this outlet will remain idle, because uh, you cannot, uh, uh, you don't have any free inlet the new connection. Yes? Sorry, I didn't understand. What, uh, what uh, represents N and N? N is uh, the number of inlets and N is okay. the number of outlets. Okay. So this is a 5 by 4, this is a 4 by 5. You can, uh, N and M can be different. Okay? You're not uh, uh, constrained to have uh, squared uh, matrices. Okay. Now, last time we talked about uh, uh, the uh, multiplexing domains, input and output multiplexing spaces. And uh, we mentioned the fact that uh, they can be multidimensional if you use different uh, um, <coughs> domains to perform your multiplexing 
operation and uh, for example in the case of the uh, optical cross connect uh, we have already seen that you can have fibers uh, f1 f2 f3 f4 and so on and in each fiber you have oh sorry this should be changed this is one and the one but it should be uh, in basic so for each fiber you have a certain number of wavelengths okay this is lambda one lambda two lambda three and so on and uh, this is because when you inject uh, <coughs> optical signals at different wavelengths in the same fiber, they don't interfere. So you can uh, multiplex more signals in the same fiber. When you, uh, the, the optical cross connect is a device that is uh, performing the switching operation both in uh, the space domain, because you are changing, you may change fiber, but also in the wavelength domain. If you have wavelength converters, you may change wavelength. Uh, this representation of uh, uh, the, the input and the output space is, uh, however, a little bit complicated because you have multidimensional uh, uh, spaces. There is, however, the possibility to uh, perform a transformation uh, because most of the uh, theory that we will uh, uh, that we will explain today and it's also existing in uh, research and uh, in practice of uh, switching networks uh, has been developed to study one dimensional multiplexing spaces so very <laughs> simple uh, switching matrices uh, which are operating on just one dimension there is uh, the possibility of creating the space equivalent or building the space equivalent of uh, a complicated device, <coughs> uh, which is uh, done quite uh, in a simple way. If you take this multiplexing domain, that can be either the input or the output multiplexing domain, <coughs> and then you start. See, this is a discrete domain. You have only a, a finite set of possible combinations of wavelength and fibers. So you can count all the possible combinations, for example, in this way, starting from uh, the top or from the bottom, and so on. And then you can easily map uh, this space into uh, a single dimension. Okay. So in this way, you uh, uh, create an equivalent of the multiplexing input and output domain, and then uh, management of switching <coughs> on this uh, unidimensional domain can be uh, carried out by the systems that we have introduced before. Okay. Obviously, uh, it's not so simple that, uh, as I explain it uh, now, but uh, <coughs> uh, however, the, the possibility uh, exists and uh, uh, once you have uh, uh, created this mapping of the input and output domains uh, into a, a set of inlets and outlets, then you can apply all the theorems that uh, we, will, we will see to this equivalent matrix, that is the space equivalent of the uh, switching system that you see on the other side. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and this allows you to apply, for example, to perform the analysis of uh, uh, blocking or complexity that, uh, on, on this uh, space equivalent, then you can map back the results on the complex uh, uh, domain. Uh, we will not go into the details of this process, but it's just uh, good to know. <coughs> now let us uh, consider a square interconnection network. By square, I mean when m is equal to n, so you have the same number of inlets and the same number of outlets. The number of connections that you can set up, obviously, is uh, n, uh, the maximum number of connections. A complete set of connections, in this case, is called permutation. What do we mean by a complete set of connections? Is uh, a set of connections in which you don't have any uh, idle inlet and of course any out idle outlet since the number of inlets is equal to the number of outlets. What is a permutation? Mathematically a permutation of a set is an ordered rearrangement or a listing or a, uh, arrangement of sequence without repetition 
of the elements of the set. What is the set in our case? Is the set of inlets. Okay. So, for example, if you consider uh, a situation, you have a square uh, switching uh, matrix. The matrix is setting up connections uh, 0 to 0, 1 to 3, 2 to 1, and 3 to 2. These are the connections in terms of uh, uh, inlet outlet pairs that are interconnected. And uh, this is the track equivalent to take the set of inlets 0, 1, 2, 3 and exchange the order of, of the numbers. So if, uh, if you list the outlet, you obtain a set that contains the same numbers, that are the same elements contained in the set of inlets, but in a different order. Okay. So this is why when you create, uh, when you set up all the possible connections in a square interconnection network, you are performing a permutation. Okay. And in this example, you see that we have one permutation in, uh, in this, uh, this uh, picture, let's say permutation A, another permutation in this picture B, another permutation in this other picture C. Okay. Obviously, also this, that is the identity, is a permutation. Okay. It is a particular permutation, but it's a permutation. So, the picture shows that uh, the switching, uh, um, the, the interconnection network represented here is able to set up three permutations. Okay. How many permutations we can set up with uh, a, a, an n by n interconnection network? The number of the maximum number of different different permutations that you can set up is. Uh, that is called usually in the symbol P, is n factorial. Hmm? It's n factorial. It is the factorial of uh, uh, the number of inlets and the number of outlets. Or you can say that P is uh, le always less than or equal to uh, n factorial. Uh, how can we uh, prove this? It's very simple. <coughs> So let's say that uh, it's a, a, a simple recursive uh, procedure. So you, if you start with uh, the simplest uh, possible interconnection network, squared interconnection network, that is the 2 by 2 interconnection network with n is equal to 2. And here you have inlets 0 and 1, and outlets 0 and 1. <coughs> So the permutations that you can set up are just two. Okay. Okay. No other possible permutation. So here uh, P is equal to two. Okay, is equal to N. Now let's consider a more complicated case. Okay. So if I imagine to fix the first uh, connect the connection from the first inlet to the different outlets, then uh, if I create the connection uh, 0, 0, okay. and this is uh, fixed, then I have uh, the rest of uh, inlets and outlets, which is composed by two elements. So applying whatever we have done uh, above, <coughs> uh, this means that here you can have uh, uh, one one 
1, 2, and then 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay. Then I take, I set the, the first, uh, the connection from the first inlet to another state, for example, connecting 0 to 1. And then I have uh, 1, 0. Uh, sorry. This is 2. 2, 2. And uh, 1, 2, 2, 0. Okay. And if you set 0, 2, here you will have uh, 1, 0, 2, 1, and uh, 1, uh, 1, 2, 0. Okay. So you notice that in this case the number uh, of uh, uh, maximum number of connections of no, permutations, sorry, is n multiplied p max of n minus one. Okay. So it means. Uh, 3 by uh, 2 is equal to 6, that is equal to 3 factorial. Okay. If we increase again n equal to 4, we can repeat the same. Okay, so we will set first uh, <coughs> 0, 0, then uh, first uh, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And then here, when, when you list uh, all the possible permutations of the remaining uh, uh, set of uh, index and outlets, here you will have the uh, number of permutations that is. Uh, P max of uh, two, uh, sorry, of three. Okay. So again, P max equal to n multiplied by P max n minus one. And if you saw this recursion, it will result in an end factorial. Okay. So the maximum number of uh, permutations is uh, n factorial. Questions? <coughs> Okay, so this is uh, uh, another uh, important uh, concept that we have introduced, the concept of uh, permutations. And now we start with uh, the first uh, um, property uh, that the interconnection uh, network can, uh, uh, can have. That is called accessibility. The accessibility is the capability of setting up single connections in absence of traffic. If uh, uh, the interconnection network has a full accessibility, it means that you can set up all possible connections. By possible connections, I mean that you can connect each inlet to each outlet in the case where you have just that connection active in the network and all the others are switched off. 
partial accessibility is of course when this is not uh, <coughs> it's not uh, uh, possible okay so when uh, uh, I'm talking about accessibility uh, in order to understand if a interconnection network has this property or not I have to do a test perform a test uh, which is the accessibility test. Uh, it is very simple. You just have a, to activate one connection at a time and check whether from each inlet I can reach all the outlets. So think about uh, a, a realistic situation. You bought a, a, a chip that is implementing an interconnection network from a, a, a vendor. And before putting the chip in your uh, <coughs> in your equipment, you want to test it. So the first test to do is uh, to check if there is uh, communication between uh, each inlet and each outlet. But you have to perform this test, testing one connection at a time. Okay. So in this case, for example, I start from uh, zero, then I go to one, I go to two, I go to three. And each time I switch on and switch off the connection, looking at uh, whether there is the signal at the output or not. So this is the full test that you have. Uh, <coughs> but uh, uh, as we have seen before, uh, it's something that you have to do each time testing one connection at a time. So it doesn't mean that all these. Uh, <coughs> Red lines are active, just one at a time. Uh, it may be obvious that you have accessibility, because if you don't have accessibility, then it means that basically uh, your uh, uh, interconnection system does not work very well. Uh, but however, you can conceive uh, networks with partial accessibility. For example, Think about uh, this uh, switching network that is composed of two switching elements, two by two. The switching element two by two is the simplest you can conceive and usually is uh, uh, a, a logical circuit, so it's, it's implemented as a set of uh, transistors. If you put in the box uh, two switching elements like this, without any communication between them, you obtain a 4x4 four four, uh, uh, interconnection network, which is partially accessible. Okay. If you want to build a fully accessible network using 2x2 two two switching elements, you, can, you have to introduce at least another stage. This is a possible architecture that is fully accessible. So in order to uh, check that this is true, <coughs> is all uh, the situation for considering uh, the first uh, inlet okay, on the top. But since everything is symmetrical, of course you, you have to repeat uh, exactly the same for uh, all the other inlets. So in this case you have uh, the possibility of setting up uh, for example, connection 0, 0, 0, 1, but you cannot set up the connection 0, 2 or 0, 3 because there is no communication between the two <coughs> switching elements. If you have two stages, instead you can see that I have full uh, accessibility. Okay, I can arrive from uh, this first inlet to all the possible outlets one connection at the time, but uh, everything is reachable. Okay. So now this is was the first property. Uh, now we are going to talk about the second property that concerns uh, blocking, and this is uh, more complicated. Uh, so. Interconnection networks may be divided into two uh, categories in terms of uh, blocking functionality, blocking and non-blocking networks. 
Let us consider an idle inlet and an idle outlet, so an idle pair, inlet outlet pair. The network is defined non-blocking if it is always possible to set up a new connection for the idle pair. Okay? And this is independent of the state of the network at the set type time. What do we mean by independent of the state of the network? We mean that we are focusing on a specific connection, that is the new connection that we want to set up. But this time, when we set up this new connection, in the network there are there is already a set of connections that are active. Okay? So we don't have thus in the previous case we tested one connection at a time. Here we have to consider the case when you have more connections active. A set of connections already active or when you, you want to set up the new connection. So if uh, independently of the connections that are already active, you can always set up the new connection, then the network is non-blocking. The network is blocking if the vice versa occurs. And the vice versa means that you have an idle inlet and an idle out outlet, so in principle they are available, you try to set up a connection, but the setup fails. Okay. Since the inlet is idle and the outlet is idle, failure has to be created by internal blocking situations. For instance, <clears throat> if internally inside the box there is uh, some uh, uh, part, a component, or a, a, a generically a resource that is uh, uh, already used by some other connection that is active. This is the typical blocking, internal blocking situation. So you try to set up the connection from your idle inlet and idle outlet that has nothing to do with the uh, inlet and outlets that are already in use by other connections. And <coughs> There is a conflict, internal conflict, because this resource is already taken. Okay. So you have an internal blocking network state. <coughs> uh, we have to um, underline that uh, when you are talking about the blocking and non or non-blocking property, uh, always we are referring to internal blocking states, not to contentions that occur at inlets and uh, outlets. So here we are talking about setting up a connection where, more specifically, the outlet is idle, so it is available. Because there is another uh, source of uh, connection failure, that occurs in uh, more specifically only when you are, have uh, packet switching networks, that is the output contention. Okay, we will look at the output contentions, but it's not in this context of uh, the switching matrices. If you have output contention, uh, you cannot do anything, even if you improve the, uh, the properties of your switching matrix, you cannot solve the output contention internally. The solution, when you have output contention, as we will see in the other parts of the course, is to use buffers. That's the only possibility. Okay. Also internal contention, but this complicates that. In this case, we are talking about bufferless systems. So you, if you want to set up a connection, you have to find the three path from the source to the destination, the, the destination will be uh, free by uh, definition, and uh, a blocking can occur only inside uh, the switching device, uh, the interconnection network. Uh, so this is uh, very important to remember. Questions about this? Um, the cons the a, a, a lemma of the yeah. definition of non-blocking network is that a non-blocking square interconnection network is able to perform all the possible n-factorial permutations. 
okay? because <coughs> uh, if the network is non-blocking, you will never have uh, the uh, internal blocking states, and this is true for all the possible configurations of the switch, so all the possible permutations in case we are talking about uh, a square uh, interconnection network. So remember that uh, uh, if you uh, find an interconnection network that is able to perform, to set up all the possible n factorial permutations, then the network is non-blocking, and the vice versa is also true. If a network is non-blocking, it's able to perform all the possible n factorial permutations. Now we are taking another step, and uh, we are focusing only on the non-blocking category, we can uh, identify a, a new classification, a, deep, <coughs> a, a finer classification. Non-blocking networks can be classified in strictly non-blocking, one-sense non-blocking, and rearrangeable non-blocking networks. The network is a strict sense non-blocking if the ideal pair that we want to connect can always be connected with no internal congestion, so internal blocking states never occur. And this also implies that we can transition from any permutation to any other permutation without disrupting connections that are not modified by the transition. What do we mean by this? <coughs> This is a 4x4 network, and uh, currently the permutation that is performed is uh, uh, 0, uh, 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, and 3, 3, okay? Now, we want to make a transition from this permutation to another permutation where we have uh, 0, 2, uh, 2, 1, 1, 3, and 3, 0. Okay. So, here we have 0, 2. Uh, one. As you can see, uh, the connection 0, 2 and 2, 1 were existing in the previous permutation and are still existing in the permutation where we want to uh, go. Okay. So these connections are not involved in the permutation because uh, they don't change. We want only to change uh, these two connections that previously were set in this way, and now we want to set them in this way. If this network is uh, strictly non-blocking, uh, of course, if this network is uh, non-blocking, this will always be possible. Okay, so we will always uh, be, uh, have the possibility of set up this specific permutation because it's, it's one of the possible permutations. Then, if the network is uh, strictly non-blocking, we can do it without disrupting connections 0, 2, and 2, 1. Okay. You can imagine that this has an high impact in terms of uh, uh, performance or usability of a switching matrix because imagine that uh, 
these are connections where uh, you have, uh, imagine that this is used uh, in a, a, a very large uh, node inside uh, an internet uh, uh, switching, uh, a neutral switching center or an internet exchange uh, point. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> these two connections are used by uh, interconnecting uh, operator A with uh, B and uh, operator C with D. Okay. Now you have to change uh, other operators because they want to change their routing policy. Uh, and so you have to uh, rearrange or exchange these two, the state of these two connections. But operator A and B and C and D uh, are not uh, uh, in, in any sense uh, involved by this uh, permutation. So what they want is that their service has no interruptions. Okay. If they have a, a, a service interruption, it means that they will lose data. They will lose, uh, at least even for a short time, uh, they will lose some uh, <coughs> information. Or uh, in any case, it means uh, you have uh, a downgrade of the reliability of this switching system. So the strict non blocking property is quite important. Because otherwise, <coughs> You cannot do it. You have to disturb somebody that is not involved in uh, the, the operation of uh, rearrangement. White sense non-blocking is the other category. The idle pair can be always uh, connected if the blocking states are prevented by a proper policy of resource allocation of the connections. In terms of uh, permutation, the permutation transition can occur as in the restricted non-blocking case, so without disrupting the other uh, connections that are not involved in the uh, exchange of configuration. But this can be um, achieved only if all the connections are set up with a specific um, policy or routing policy. Uh, we will see it later uh, in a better way. Uh, in a strictly non-blocking network, uh, the internal path that you, ch that you choose has no impact on the fact that uh, connections are not uh, disrupted. So, for example, if there are several paths, for example, from uh, 2 to 1, any of the path that is used by the connection from 2 to 1 uh, will uh, make no difference. The connections will never be disrupted when you are changing the other connections. This is not true instead in the white sense non-blocking. In the white sense non-blocking, everything works as strictly non-sense, only provided that you perform routing of the connections internally in a very specific way. The final case is the rearrangeable non-blocking uh, category. And here, an idle pair can be also uh, always connected by applying, if in some cases, or if needed, the rearrangements or connections that are active at the time of the new setup. So you can transit from one permutation to another, but sometimes it's necessary to disrupt one or more connections that are not involved in the transition. So in this case, for example, it means that you have, before setting up these new connections, you have to switch off everything here, and then set up again. Okay. So at the end, uh, if you see it uh, end to end, uh, nothing changes in terms of uh, these two connections here. And here you will implement the other connections. But this one, these two have been switched off for a while, maybe for a short time, but switched off. And uh, again, this has an impact in terms of uh, uh, outage time. <clears throat> what is the, the, the other side uh, of the coin? Of course, is that when you implement a strict sense non-blocking uh, switching ne network, uh, the, uh, the, com the complexity or the cost of your uh, 
component will be much more than white sands and more than the arrangement. So when you want to go up in terms of blocking performance, you have to pay more in the sense that uh, you will have to use uh, more uh, components, you have to use larger architectures, uh, consume more power and so on. Okay. If you instead uh, uh, are happy with the uh, arrangement of the blocking network, cost will be less. Yes. I mm. just understand the uh, work by the sense in blocking. Mm -hmm. Why sense non blocking means that uh, well, you know, probably uh, will be more clear when we introduce also the number of paths that you have from uh, one uh, from one point to another. Uh, let's say that, uh, for example, uh, <coughs> let's take. Uh, this connection here, A2, okay. You have three different possible paths inside uh, the, the, your network, internal paths, that are connecting 0 to 2. And, uh, for instance, you have uh, three different possible paths for, let's say, the other one was... Uh, uh, Two to uh, three to three, let's say. Um, assume that these paths, in the inter these internal paths, uh, from three to three are different from each other. From two to two to from zero to two are different from each other. But it may be that one path from 3 to 3 shares a common element with another path from 0 to 2. Okay. So, in a, a, a strictly non-blocking network, this don't occur. So you can set up uh, 0 to 2 using any path and 3 to 3 using any path. You will never have any uh, blocking state. In a wide sense non blocking network, this may occur, but there is a, 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 an algorithm, a working algorithm that, uh, for example, says uh, if you receive a connection request from 0 to 2, then use a path A. Okay? If you receive a connection request from 3 to 3, uh, you can use uh, this path uh, C. But since uh, from 0 to 2, you use the path A, there is no blocking situation. If you don't attend, if you don't apply this rule, maybe you have chosen this path, path C also from 0 to 2, then you are not able to choose the path C from 3 to 3. Okay. In any case, we will only focus on uh, strict sense non-blocking and real general non-blocking networks. Okay, we won't uh, look into strict non-blocking, uh, wide sense non-blocking, because in wide sense non-blocking, analysis is much more complicated. Okay? It's already complicated with uh, SNB and RNB. We don't want to get into too much complexity. <coughs> so this is uh, uh, the... Um, global uh, uh, summary of all possible situations. Uh, you have this uh, no blocking category and blocking category. No blocking category is divided into rearrangeable white sense and strict sense. Uh, no, the possible white sense rearrangeable and uh, blocking, you, you may have internal blocking states. Only with strict sense non blocking, you never have internal blocking states. Okay. Uh, so, in the white sense and in the rearrangeable uh, non blocking case, you are able to uh, walk around this problem in the white sense by routing in a suitable way the connections, in the rearrangeable by switching off active connections in some cases and uh, switch them on again. 
after you have uh, also routed the, the connection that you want to set up. How to understand if a network is uh, uh, blocking or, uh, or, or non-blocking and in which category? The blocking test, as the opposite of the accessibility test, has to take into account that you have traffic flowing. So you cannot um, assess blocking with just one connection. Okay? You have to uh, consider uh, the setup of uh, uh, all the possible connections in case of a square network, you will always uh, uh, try to set up a, a new connection when n minus 1 are already active. Okay, That's the worst uh, case. Examples. <clears throat> With examples, things will be uh, more uh, clear. Now we are looking at uh, networks again using 2x2 uh, two two switching elements. 2x2 two two switching elements are uh, the fundament, the basic uh, uh, components of the networks, of switching networks. Here there is no point. <coughs> and uh, um, they have two inputs and two, two inlets and two outlets. And they can uh, perform, as we have uh, seen before, two permutations, only two permutations. This means that uh, their internal state can be, uh, they, they can be, they can have only two possible internal states. And the states are called bar and cross, for the obvious uh, reason that you see in the, uh, in the picture. Okay? So with bar, you connect 0 to 0 and 1 to 1. With cross, you connect 0 to 1, 1 to 0. So what can we do with these uh, uh, <coughs> switching elements? We have already seen a, very, a simple architecture uh, uh, that uh, we know already that has uh, full accessibility, okay, instead of the single stage that has partial accessibility. So now uh, we can take this architecture and start asking if it is blocking or non-blocking. Okay, we know that it has full accessibility. We have already performed the test, but is it blocking or not? Let's uh, um, try to set up a permutation. In this case, we have n uh, a square uh, architecture, so we can talk about permutations. Uh, let's try with this permutation. Actually, you can set up this permutation. Okay, no problem about this. Uh, <coughs> if you uh, put all the uh, switching elements in the bar state, then you obtain exactly uh, what is uh, written on the left. Now let's try with another permutation, for example, this one, that is the identity, but as I already uh, told you, is a possible permutation. What happens in this case? In this case, in order to set up it, we should uh, uh, have this configuration. Okay? But this configuration is impossible for two reasons. First, because we are... Have, uh, we, are, we have a contention on internal links. So two connections wants to go on that internal link. And second, we have also a contention on the state of the switching elements. Because those switching elements must be at the same time in the bar and the cross state, which is impossible. Okay. So there is uh, no way to implement that permutation and therefore, this network is not able to set up all possible permutations and is, uh, as a consequence, a blocking network. Okay? Because there are permutations that are forbidden, this, uh, uh, this is already a sufficient proof of blockingness. So you, you, there is no possibility. You can notice uh, uh, inter an interesting uh, uh, fact that there is a, a single path from uh, each inlet to each outlet. So we have reachability, uh, accessibility, so it's possible to go from uh, uh, any inlet to any outlet, but we can go only by, uh, by using uh, a single path. So we have no uh, alternative uh, on uh, routing uh, in this network. Okay, so what can we do in order to uh, improve it? 
now I didn't have time to put it on the slides, so I will draw it on the board. Notice that uh, we have already uh, <coughs> uh, um, we, have, we have already witnessed to um, basic engineering fact that uh, in order to achieve uh, access full accessibility, we had to put an extra stage. You know? So the concept is that the more you want in terms of performance, the more you, you have to pay in terms of complexity. So this suggests us also the next step that uh, what we can could do to improve this network that is uh, st that is blocking. Mm -hmm. So what we can do <coughs> the easiest uh, uh, things to do is to add another stage. Okay. We add another stage, so we are increasing the complexity. Let's see if uh, uh, this, uh, um, in, this, this extra cost turns into a better performance in terms of uh, blockiness. So let's uh, start from uh, uh, the test that we have performed uh, uh, so, uh, just uh, previously. Uh, let's see that now we are able to set up that, that connection. So the, the, that uh, permutation, permutation 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. So these, for example, can put in the bar state. This in the bar state. Try to put this in the cross states. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> bar state as well and bar state also for this okay. so what happens now here is the zero zero this goes down and then up you have one one two two and three three okay So this uh, uh, <coughs> suggests us that uh, this network may be non-blocking. Uh, you can uh, uh, try yourself to see that uh, all the possible, all the uh, four factorial permutations uh, that you can uh, require can be set up. And if you do it, you will discover that actually this network is non-blocking. Okay, so you can perform all the permutations. Question. Now that we have discovered that it is uh, non-blocking, let's see if it, in, in which way it is non-blocking. So if it is a strict non-blocking or, uh, or a rearrangeable non-blocking. And... Uh, for example, we can uh, consider the transition from this permutation to another permutation, let's say 0, 0, uh, 1, 2, 2, 1, and uh, 3, 3. Okay. So here uh, we have two connections that remains this, that survives that survive zero zero and three three are not involved in uh, the permutation. The other two connections is that that uh, changes. So how can we perform make the transition from uh, this initial permutation to uh, this new permutation? If you um, look uh, at the uh, architecture and you try 
all the possibilities, you will discover that the only way to perform, to set up this permutation is to change <coughs> um, the state of these switching elements to the cross state. If you change the state of these uh, two switching elements to the cross state, now you have uh, 0, 0, <coughs> 1, 1, no, sorry, and also no, you have also to change this one. <coughs> okay. So you will have 0, 0, then 1, that goes here, and that goes here, that is uh, 1, 2, 2, goes here, then goes up, and then here, 2, 1, and 3, goes up, down, 3, 3. Okay. There is no one. Yes. Uh, and can you change to a new connection, for example, uh, from 1 to 2, if I change this? Uh, the room connection at the second one, the cross one. You mean uh, this part? Uh, no. at, uh, it's in the audience, uh, the right one, the room connection, the cross. This one. No, this. This. Uh, in the middle. This it's one? Changed. Yes. Ah, um, okay. Uh, this is a good question. You cannot change it, yeah. because this, then we will uh, uh, define it uh, uh, in a... Uh, by the way, later on, but this is called the interconnection stage. This is called also interconnection state. They are the fixed part of the device. Okay. Uh, in these uh, switching devices that are multi-state, you can only change the state of the switching elements. If you imagine uh, to implement it uh, with an electronic circuit, these are implemented with, uh, let's say, CMOS uh, logic ports. Uh, these two by two switching elements. These are uh, the uh, interconnection network that you have uh, to uh, wire on the chip. So this represents the wires on the chip. And you cannot change them because they are wired. Okay. So this, when, you, when we draw these kind of pictures, the only thing that we can control is uh, the state of the switching elements, not the interconnection elements. These interconnection patterns have to be decided before, and then you cannot change it. Okay. So as a result, you have to uh, modify the state of these uh, switching elements, and uh, connection 0 to 0 remains this in the same state as before, with the same path, so was not uh, uh, disrupted, but connection 3, 3 to 3 had to change the path. Okay, if you remember that the previous path was this one, now 3 to 3 has to go up, down, and go here. Okay, so there is a path for 3 to 3, it's not uh, uh, you can set, set it up, but there was a moment in time when it was switched off, even if. The uh, source and destination did not change. Okay. So, this did not change. so this uh, implies that this network is uh, rearrangeable, non blocking. Okay. Uh, we just need uh, this proof because if it is, uh, if there is at least uh, one transition from uh, one permutation to another, in which you have to perform at least one rearrangement, then the network is rearrangeable. It's not uh, a state sense non blocking anymore. Okay. <coughs> so this network is rearrangeable non blocking. Again, uh, we can uh, look at the number of paths, alternative paths from one source to a destination. And you discover here that, let's take, for example, uh, the pairs 0 and 0. Okay. In this case, you have two possible paths. One is this one. Okay. Now, this picture is uh, <coughs> uh, a mess, but uh, 
you will have it better in, in the slice or in the PDF. The other path is uh, this one. Okay, so it means that you have one possibility and another possibility. And this is this holds for the pair zero zero, but since everything is symmetrical, it holds also for the other pairs. Okay. Final step. Can we do something to improve the blocking performance? So how can we find the best solution in terms of performance that is the strictly non-blocking method? Okay. Now we could uh, uh, go on as in the previous cases and add an extra stage here okay, of the two switching elements. But the theory says, we, we don't know it now, but we will know it uh, later, that uh, it doesn't work. So we have to change uh, uh, the architecture and uh, no, take it as uh, uh, proved, and we will see that it, it, there is a, a formal proof for this. The solution, one of the most efficient solutions that we may adopt in order to make this network strictly non-blocking is this one. So here we have still the four inlets. and the four outlets, okay? Now, internally, we have three stages, but we cannot use uh, any more simple two by two switching elements in all the stages. And in particular here, we have to use uh, two by three switching elements. Here we can use two by two, and here we can use, we have to use three by two, okay? And the internal interconnection pattern is done in this way. Okay. So these are again the crossbar networks. These are not the crossbar anymore, but they are networks that can. Uh, take any possible uh, permutation, considering, however, that we have two uh, uh, inputs and three outputs. <coughs> um, all the components, the switching components of this architecture, themselves must be strictly non-blocking, otherwise everything is not so strictly non-blocking. So internally here you don't have, you, you don't, uh, uh, you cannot have any internal block, blocking state, both here and but also here. So when you have this kind of uh, architecture, uh, you can prove that uh, you are in the strict sense non-blocking case. Uh, for example, when you want to make this transition, uh, we take the same uh, permutations as before. So here we had the, the uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. And here we have the 0, 0, uh, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 3. Okay. So let's start with the first uh, permutation. So you can uh, uh, set up the first connection this way, set up the second connection in this way, third connection, so here you have uh, this kind of configuration, here you have your bar state, then uh,
this is uh, number three uh, three to three and uh, two to two is takes this way <coughs> When uh, we uh, make the transition towards this other permutation, we can simply change the state of this intermediate switching element. So now we have implemented the <coughs> permutation, but you can notice that connections 3 to 3 and 0 to 0 were not uh, disrupted. So you can uh, go from one state to another without disrupting connections that are not uh, uh, involved in the, in the permutation. So we have uh, the strictly non-blocking uh, implementation. The cost is, the complexity is larger this case uh, quite larger than uh, the rearrangeable non-blocking case because here not only we have increased the number of the switching elements but we have uh, we have also to use larger switching elements so this, uh, as we will see means an increase of the cost finally you can uh, uh, look that in this case if you take uh, uh, one uh, inlet and uh, uh, one specific outlet, for example, 0, 0, you have increased the number of possible paths. And for instance, here you have one path that is this. <coughs> then you, you have, there is uh, <coughs> uh, another possible path that is uh, this one. and another path that is uh, uh, the one below. Okay. So, increasing complexity in the internal architecture of the mm -hmm. interconnection network uh, has the result of increasing the possibilities when you use the connections. Uh, when we uh, improve the performance from that connection, it means that uh, we will have more paths and more switches? Uh, you will have uh, uh, more, more possible, possible paths. And it's better than the average that uh, we have? Yes. Yes, we, 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 if you look at what the architectures we have seen, in uh, uh, the one stage you had uh, even uh, no path at all for some uh, connections, so no accessibility. In the two stage you had only one path, but the entropy spot was blocking. In the three stage, you uh, but, uh, three stage with two by two switching elements, you had. Uh, two possible paths and the network was rearrangeable non blocking. Mm -hmm. Here we have three stages but with uh, increased dimensions. Mm -hmm. You have three possible paths and the network is strictly non blocking. Okay. Why this network is strictly non blocking? We will prove it formally next uh, lessons with the uh, cross theorem. Okay, this is a cross theorem. Uh, this is SMB. No. Strictly non blocking. Yeah. So there is there is, uh, uh, mm -hmm. there is no forbidden uh, path. No, there is no forbidden permutation because it's non blocking. And uh, we we have shown that if you want to go from this permutation to this other permutation, 
the connections that are not uh, changing, we can remain active. We don't have to switch them off. Why? Because they can keep the same path. Okay? Here they had, they were rooted in a specific path, that is this one, for example, for the 3 to 3. In this new permutation, 3 to 3 remains in the same path. In the previous case, with the rearrangement of blocking, we had to change the path of 3 to 3 in order to accommodate the new connection. Why? The, so here we just uh, uh, look at a very specific uh, transition from one specific permutation and uh, to the, another specific permutation. If you want to know if this holds in general, for considering all possible permutations, <coughs> you cannot do it by inspection because the speed is uh, very uh, large. Uh, we have to prove it uh, formally with a theorem. And the cost theorem tells you that uh, it is uh, it actually is strictly non block. So you will see it uh, next time. Okay. So I think we can. Uh, okay, just uh, the, the last, uh, last thing. Um, so these are uh, so far boxes. We started with uh, empty boxes. Uh, knowing nothing about what is inside. We have looked at very simple cases where you can use 2 by 2 switching elements. But now we can also introduce a switching matrix with its uh, internal implementation that is general, because in the previous cases were only for uh, the, the 4 by 4 uh, situation. Now we can uh, introduce this uh, architecture that is a general architecture in the sense that with that architecture you can build n by n switching matrices. And uh, this is the first uh, uh, switching architecture that we uh, see, and it's also the simplest one. It's called the crossbar switch. Uh, crossbar switch, not to be confused with the crossbar state of the switching element. They use the same name, but uh, there are two different uh, things, so they are related. So this crossbar switch is the simplest uh, strict sense non-blocking switching matrix that you can use for any size except for physical limitations. And uh, it, it has uh, uh, the index, of usually it's represented in this way. Mm -hmm. There are other representations that are more complicated, but this is the simple. You put the inlets on one side of these uh, uh, rectangle, the outlets on the adjacent uh, uh, side, and uh, internally uh, there is a set of rows, each one corresponding to an inlet, and a set of columns, each one corresponding to an outlet. At the intersection of each uh, column and the row, there is this point that is there, uh, that is called the cross point. The cross point has a property this is uh, the zoom of uh, that uh, uh, component It's uh, actually, even if it is uh, uh, draw, uh, drawn in a different way, it's still a 2 by 2 switching element. And since it is a 2 by 2 switching element, it can take two states. One state is this one. When it is in this state, the, what is uh, arriving here goes straight. Okay. The other state is this one, ah, and also what is arriving in this direction goes straight. So what is arriving from uh, east to, from west to east goes straight, and what is arriving from south to north goes go straight. This is the second state. It means that what is arriving from east is, go, is uh, sent to north. From, from west is sent to north, what is arriving from south is sent to uh, east. 
By using these devices, the cross points and the architecture that is made by columns and rows, um, you can uh, uh, see immediately that uh, uh, the network is uh, uh, strictly non-blocking. <coughs> For example, here you can see that there are three, uh, three connections are set up, one to one, two to three, two to three and three to two. And uh, they can cross without interfering in any configuration that you can imagine. Okay. So you are able to set up all possible permutations and uh, uh, if you want to change from one permutation to another, you just rearrange the, um, uh, the switch, the, the cross points that are involved in the uh, changes. If you have cross points in all the intersections, you have a full accessibility and also strict non blocking property. You may also implement, in some cases, uh, the, the same network with less cross points. Uh, so you have partial access. <clears throat> so your connections can intersect without interfering. And uh, how can we evaluate uh, the complexity of this architecture? <clears throat> in order to compare, this is uh, this holds in general, not only for the crossbar. In order to compare different implementations, as we did before. We have to find a, a, a metric that is uh, by which we can measure complexity. There are several choices that are possible. For example, referring to the physical implementation like gates uh, per chip, chip per board, chip area, and so on. Here we just uh, take the simple way and count the uh, the switching elements, or in this case the cross points, since we are talking about this. Uh, uh, devices that I've shown before. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, in, in, a, in a crossbar that is n by m, you have n by m cross points. So the cost is equal to n by m. Okay. And in the square configuration where m is equal to n, uh, the complexity is n squared. Another way to observe that this is uh, uh, a strict, you know, sense, uh, uh, a, a strict, strict sense non-blocking architecture is that since you have n square cross points, it means that each cross point is dedicated to a specific input-output pair, to a specific in inlet-outlet pair. <coughs> and uh, so when you want to switch on that specific connection, you just set the state of the cross point that corresponds to the inlet outlet pairs. Okay, since here you are, we are always asking if we can set up a new connection between a, a, an idle pair and we have the internal uh, resource in order to set up it, it will always work, okay, no matter of the state of the other connections. Okay, I stop here. Uh, next uh, time we will continue with this uh, discussion.